What's going on guys? I hope that you're all having a wonderful day today. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Ty. Today in this video, we're having an emergency meeting. I'm trying to not make an Among Us reference because that game's like four years old at this point because the Russo brothers are returning to Marvel Studios to direct Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. Listen, we just got an early report basically saying that from, you know, the Hollywood Reporter and Variety, completely reliable sources, that they are in early talks to direct these films to return to Marvel, and I just cannot believe it. I feel like the response from people that I've been seeing online is pretty tame. They're like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool that they're returning, but I feel like everyone's just underestimating how absolutely insane this is. Listen, let me just start by saying this. If you've never seen my videos before, I am a Marvel fanatic. I'm just going to be honest with you. I am a MCU stan. It's like my favorite franchise, but I am not afraid to say when they are doing something wrong. Trust me, I have ranted and rambled and screamed at Marvel on this channel when they make horrible decisions. But when I saw this today, I almost jumped out of my chair because, oh my God, what an incredible decision. But listen, I can just sit here and say, oh my God, this is great. Wow, that's amazing. But I want to dive into why this is so amazing for the future of the MCU and why it feels like this will kind of continue this hopeful streak that I have with the MCU, whether it's Deadpool and Wolverine, and then the next couple of movies going right into Secret Wars and, you know, Avengers 5, all of that. Now, listen, the Russo brothers had an insane streak with Marvel. They directed four movies in total. That's going to be Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame. If you were to objectively take a poll, right? Let's just say you got all Marvel fans together and you said, hey, what's your favorite MCU movies? I feel like the objective opinion could be that those are the four best MCU movies. What I'm trying to say here is I get it. Everybody has different favorites. I think that for me, those four movies are in my top like eight, let's just say. But I think that if you said, hey, those are the four best Marvel movies, nobody would disagree with you. So, we have these people that literally directed the hell out of Marvel, right? They know the system. They're very close with Kevin Feige. And yes, they left uh, Marvel Studios to kind of go on their own, which I'm going to get to in a second. But now it's time for them to return home when Marvel's in a bad state. But listen, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. So, obviously, they directed Avengers Endgame, right? And then, obviously, they're taking this new path because, you know, that was kind of just like the conclusion of their saga. They did their more individual film with a Winter Soldier, then their first small ensemble, which kind of warmed them up for the Avengers, with Civil War. Then we got Infinity War and Endgame, where, of course, since they were doing both movies, it was easier for them to, you know, communicate and figure out the story that they wanted to tell because there was two different directors for those two films. It would have been a little bit weird, but whatever. They had a natural progression. They started off pretty relatively, you know, in the middle when it came to stage and they gradually built their way up until they were super familiar with the Marvel system and they were putting out the best Marvel movies. But again, like I said, Endgame was kind of just like this conclusion. Yeah, they were still going to go forward, but it just seemed that they wanted to do their own things, make their own projects. And that's okay because the MC was also going in another direction with Phase 4. But the unfortunate reality is this did not work out for either of them. The Russo brothers, right? Let's just start with them. They put out a couple of movies like Cherry with Tom Holland, which I think got pretty bad reviews, and some other movies that basically no one even talks about. I'm forgetting what they even are. Nothing really that crazy whatsoever. I mean, they've been doing like Netflix movies and stuff. Nothing that great. They are legendary. Some of the greatest, if not the greatest, comic book directors of all time. The second they left the MCU, though, it was like, no, their careers were going downhill. Now, now don't get me wrong. Listen, there's other directors that have directed MCU films, but once the Russo brothers left... Good God, things went downhill. The MCU, you know, we were getting TV shows now. We were getting kind of experimental. Don't get me wrong. I feel like Marvel did get kind of unlucky in some situations. And I don't want to sound disrespectful like this is unlucky. But, you know, Chadwick Boseman passes away. They bring Chloe Zhao in, who's an independent director, which... The Eternals just didn't really end up working out for them. That was just a swing and a miss, even though it seemed like a home run. And that kind of like set the tone for Phase 4 and Phase 5. So many things didn't go their way. The Jonathan Majors situation, even though I feel like Quantumania was bad, but it doesn't matter. Things are not going their way. It just felt like this breakup where these people actually did need each other. And now, years down the line, they're rekindling their love and they're saying, listen... We were meant for each other. We need to get the gang back together if we both need to be successful. Because like I said, both of them were doing phenomenally together. They mixed together so well. You want to talk about a well-oiled machine? It was the greatest well-oiled machine in all of cinematic history. Billion dollar film, billion dollar film, billion dollar film. Unbelievable success. All their films together have put together like $33 billion 
in total. I'm talking about the whole MCU. But of course, the Russo brothers kind of did shepherd that a bit with their larger event films. It's time to get them back together at a time where the MCU is at its weakest almost. And don't get me wrong, I get that we're kind of on a bit of an uh, you know, uphill battle here where we're trying to fight our way back up to the top, but we have Deadpool and Wolverine coming out. But a lot of people were kind of concerned because the writers are coming on and off of the Avengers movies, the Blade movies in like shambles at this point. Next year, the movies seem okay, but obviously we don't have enough information yet. But those Avengers movies, man, it was Kang Dynasty for Avengers 5. Now we have no name because of the Jonathan Major situation. People also didn't really like Kang in Quantumania. He got beat by Ant-Man. I think Ant-Man should have died personally, but that's a conversation for another day. The reality is they need each other. So what do you do for Avengers 5 and Avengers 6? You go to the greatest comic book directors, arguably, of all time that know the Marvel system like the back of their hands and that, quite honestly, have probably accepted the fact that Maybe they're not that great outside of the MCU, which is okay because, again, they have a specialty that they are phenomenal at. It's like if you get Michael Jordan and you say, hey, go play football. He's not going to be that great, but when he's playing basketball, he's the greatest of all time. That's how it works with this. It's still movie making, but still, it's just a different genre, a different type of system. These Avengers movies, right? I understand that some people were saying, you know, I'd really like to see someone else's take on them because we only had Joss Whedon for the first two. You know, some people don't really love Age of Ultron, but... I still think it's a very good movie. Then, you know, you had the Russo brothers doing even Civil War, which is a Captain America movie, but that's basically another Avengers movie, and the other two Avengers films, Infinity War and Endgame. People were saying, okay, for Avengers 5, since we're going multiverse, maybe we get like a, a Ryan Coogler or a Sam Raimi. But I'm going to be honest with you. I know that people want like this new flavor. They wanted someone else to get a crack into the Avengers films, like Sean Levy, who was offered Avengers 5. But you know what the reality is? They need a safe play. Not just a safe play, but an amazing play. Because if these Avengers films are bad, good God, they are going to be in hell. Hell. So who do you go after? Because don't get me wrong, Sam Raimi has made phenomenal comic book films. Sean Levy, if Deadpool and Wolverine's good, damn, he has a notch on his belt. That's great. He made a good film. Ryan Coogler's done Black Panther. Those are great. But nobody, none of those people have done films like the Avengers films with like 30 characters in a two-part saga, or maybe a Secret Wars by itself is even two parts, that'll be a three-part saga. No one knows how to make those movies specifically in the Marvel system. If it works, if it ain't broke, I should say, don't fix it. These are some of the greatest comic book directors of all time. You can say, oh my god, but you know, they're not really that stylized, like, you know, they have that MCU formula. Guys, the MCU formula, even though I know in some situations it's bad, is their style. It's making great films that maybe don't have the most insane shots in the world, the most unbelievable cinematography you've ever seen, but it has great storytelling, a nice balance to where we're seeing every character, they're not really lacking in any uh, area, and phenomenal villains. At the end of the day, storytelling is what's important. Oh no, the cinematography isn't going to be like Dune Part 2. But guys, if we're getting a phenomenal story, I really don't care that much. Because at the end of the day, if the movie looks beautiful, but the story's bad, who cares? There's a billion examples of those films, and they're never remembered in the history of cinema. Because no one cares. If your movie looks good, who cares? And don't get me wrong, I get it. Having style is important. But it's just the point that these people know the Marvel system better than the back of their hand, I would even say. They have made some of the greatest comic book films of all time. So if for some reason you're disappointed that they're coming back because you wanted to see new blood, I just don't understand it. Because Marvel cannot afford to miss on Avengers 5 and Secret Wars. The thing is, if they were doing, let's just say, just Avengers 5 and they weren't doing Secret Wars, I think that would kind of throw me off a bit because it's like, uh, why are we only having you do one? Look what they did with Infinity War and Endgame. The way they were able to bridge those movies, obviously having their own, you know, ideas and just branching them to each other. But the fact that they're doing both, what they're going to be able to set up with Avengers 5 to then pay off in Avengers 6. You know, I'm not saying, oh, the heroes have to lose again, but whatever happens is just going to happen, right? They know what they're doing now. And what's good is, I get it. They haven't really been dealing with the MCU, right? But they can look at the MCU from an outside lens because they've been out of it for like five years now. They can say, okay, what characters do we want to pick and choose? What story can we converge them on? What can we, how can we put them together? Because again, they kind of shepherded the MCU 
into Infinity War and Endgame with Civil War, kind of with Winter Soldier, not as much. They didn't really have a say on how we got to Avengers 5, if that makes sense. They'll have a say, obviously, how we get to Avengers 6, because they already did Avengers 5. But they have to pick and choose what they want to use from Phase 4, from Phase 5, to get to that Avengers movie, that Avengers 5 movie. Which I think is going to be very interesting. But again, I trust them because they're probably going to be re-watching these movies or maybe watching them for the first time. I don't know if they've watched like Shang-Chi and stuff. Who knows? They're going to be watching these movies and trying to say, how can we bring it all together? In one grand crescendo, how can we make a great Avengers story out of this? Because that's what they know how to do. That is their bread and butter. There is no doubt in my mind that this was a bad decision. If the movies end up being bad... Honestly, they went out in the best way possible with their most trusted directors. But at the end of the day, that's the that's the word that I'm talking about here. Trust. There is nobody on this earth that you can say you trust more than the Russo brothers to do the next two Avengers movies. And I get it. They weren't really involved the past five years. But I trust them to look at these scraps, to look at the higher moments, the better characters, maybe leave out the weaker characters or the weaker plot lines and pull everything together like Spider-Man and Spider-Man Homecoming when he's like shooting the boat and he's pulling together that ship. That's what he's going to do for this fifth Avengers movie. And if this fifth Avengers movie is good, I have no doubt that Secret Wars is going to be good. That's probably easily going to be like the largest in terms of scale movie that we've ever seen in the MCU. It's probably going to reset the MCU, I guess, because if we go into like mutants and stuff. But listen, that's a talk for another time because boy, is that years down the line at this point. I want to talk about two more things really quick that are very important that were in the same article. Apparently, Avengers 5, and this is huge, is going to be pivoting from Kang in a new direction. They're going to go for a new look. Again, this is straight from the Hollywood Reporter article, straight from the Variety article. I am not making this up. This isn't a rumor. This is from a trusted source. They're probably going to announce all this stuff next week at Comic-Con, don't get me wrong. At least, you know, a title. I'm sure they don't have, like, the story down pat yet, especially if they're still trying to figure out, you know signing all the contracts, dotting all their I's on these contracts to lock them as the directors. But listen, I honestly completely agree with this. As good as Kang was at this point between how bad Quantumania was and how he got defeated in that Ant-Man movie and the Jonathan Majors situation, I just feel like it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth to where even if you did move on to Avengers 5 and you brought Kang back and he was really good and he was just okay... You just had that taste in your mouth, like this nasty taste, like, ugh, the last time that we saw Kang, though, we had to deal with this and this. And I think that we had an okay little Kang saga between Loki and Quantumania, but I feel like, you know what, let's just let it rest, let's just move on, let's pretend it didn't happen. In 10 years, maybe people will be, like, nostalgic for it and be like, hey, you know what, maybe that Kang arc wasn't so bad, like the Star Wars prequels, but I think it's a good idea to maybe pivot to a Doctor Doom pivot to a Galactus or whatever, you know, whoever's going to be, you know, the big bad, let the Russos cook. They have Thanos, and Thanos is already one of the greatest villains of all time, at least, you know, from a blockbuster standpoint, you know, he's near Darth Vader and near so-and-so, phenomenal villain. I think that this is a great idea because, again, that bad taste. Let's just try to move on from Phase 4, even some of Phase 5, which has not been that great. Let's go for a new direction. Let's let the Russo brothers do what they want to do. The second thing that I wanted to talk about here, which is also honestly pretty crazy and, like, blowing my mind, is that apparently Avengers 5 and 6 isn't just it for the Russo brothers. They're, like, actually coming on board with Marvel again, and that's going to be, like, their starting point, but they're going to be working on various projects. I believe that's what it was. It was, like, various works or various projects. That's what it said in the article, reliable source, as reliable as it gets. So they're going to be working on other stuff too, which is pretty crazy. Maybe we could sneak in like a solo movie from there, not Han Solo, of course, but you know, something before the Avengers to kind of warm them up, get them back into their rhythm. We could see if they're still good before Avengers, you know, maybe just give them like a, I don't want to say the Blade movie or maybe like a Spider-Man 4, I'm just making something up before those Avengers films and we could kind of just see where they're at, you know, they could kind of get back into that rhythm. I think that's a great idea. And listen, guys, wow, this is like actually feels like an MCU saving type of decision. It feels like we're a sports team and we just got a legendary head coach on our team that's been doing pretty bad over the past couple years, but hopefully now we can recruit some new players and we can have a great winning season. That's what this feels like, man. It feels like a step in the right direction. Cannot wait for San Diego Comic-Con next weekend, but guys, that's going to just about wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.